I'll relive creation of the very first hybrid instrument in 1978. On my floor, I see this hatchet. And I, I picked it up, I immediately put it up to my chin. I said, oh, that's, that's kind of, be kind of cool. Musicians call their instrument their axe. It's a famous Buddy Guy song, just playing my axe. I thought that would be a good pun. I wonder if it would fit inside that three-quarter size violin case. I went upstairs, and before I had put the tailpiece and fingerboard on there, wham! There you have it, right there. Look at the curvature of the blade, the length, if you look up here, right exactly, perfectly. And it was in an exhibition in 1981 at the Portland Art Museum. And when I got back at the exhibition, there was about $2.50 worth of change in there, which I thought was, you know. It's very playable. It has a contact mic, and I played probably 150 gigs on that, if not 200 or so. Since has been replaced by a hammer. Of course, now you can't get anything on an airplane anymore. There was a time when I could fly my hammers around the world. In the simplest way of thinking, I'm looking for objects that exist. And I'm not seeking them out as much as I'm expecting to have them come my way by way of me. So in other words, if, if I find something recently, I found half a skateboard in a garbage can. Now, half a skateboard is just about perfect. Skateboards like that, which could be a cello, but, you know, not that interesting a shape, really. So half the, the skateboard is you know, flat and the broken edges sticking up looking kind of cool and the round shape. So it's about guitar like so you put a guitar neck on it. And then you see what it sounds like and you don't really care. Let's see, a viola, some violins, not necessarily functional. Let's see the table. It was a street found piano top. And this is just a piece of driftwood. Uh, but again, the proportions. It's a small scale viola. A music stand. This is conceptually interesting, I think. And also, uh, I suspect it could be sort of functional. Uh, look, just a ten another tennis racket. I've made lots of them. This one's a little different because it's gold, and so I painted the fingerboard gold. Probably sort of playable. The old, uh, an unusual bottle here. Uh, some some uh, not so great scotch, but a triangular bottle. Seemed like it was a fit. And a little polit politically incorrect here. My poor friend was attacked by businessmen, and I've since turned him into a two-string violin. A cello made from some snowshoes. Probably won't be bowable again. Um, doesn't really matter at this point. The key odd thing about my work, I think, that people really have reason to not understand is that the sound is an accidental byproduct of an imagined visual poetic relationship that that object has to the iconography of the body of a violin, viola, guitar, blah, blah, blah. All you need is anything with a head, neck, body iconography, or even just the body, and you put a neck on it. There's probably a dozen of the f nearly 400 instruments, uh, a dozen only that I regularly kind of work out on. Hard to beat the shovel, which is one of the most playable uh, and most beautiful sounding, even acoustically, uh, of, of any of the instruments. And this is from a pro probably about, let's see, probably about 91, or 90 or 91, I found it on, and it's got three strings. So that's a very cool thing. Um, and then ones like the, the tennis racket, cane also, a very, very classic. It's that sort of look is something I've capitalized on in terms of being practical for several different reasons because you can strum it like an instrument here. But then also, then bow this part of it. Plug it into the instrument and into, in this case, just this little small little amplifier for 
demonstration purposes. And you'll see then that, that all the things on the instrument um, make sound. First of all, it has to go in your pocket, this. And uh, everything here. So that's just a little idea of how those things produce sound through the real amp. A uh, taillight reflector is actually the chin rest, and then you have this. Uh, so it can be bowed as well. It's uh, just a squirt gun painted black, but you can see the little configuration there of the chin rest, perfect for a little violin. Just some other variations. This one has a lot of bells and whistles on it, and it's part of a drill case. If you can see that I had to put a big piece of wood in the back to strengthen it. Uh, this one was featured in a, an exhibition at the Boston Museum, and there's a big book called Dangerous Curves, The Art of the Guitar. This, this was sort of featured, and it has some kind of unusual features, like some little percussion. I want to get Khaki King to play that one sometime. Vintage, 1980, 1980, wow, the old chair back. This is actually pretty, pretty functional. Pretty cool guitar. This is something I made some time ago, but styrofoam is a great resonator, as we know. And so this is interesting how just this crutch with no body, just the styrofoam resonates pretty well for a cello. <laughs> Whoops. You know, where does music end and sound art begin? Nobody really can answer that question. I guess it's in my mind that indeed they are works of art. They're one-of-a-kind works of art. Because they're functional, I know that the, some of the artists, curators, will not regard them as art. They'll think of them because they're functional as craft. And so again, maybe I'm really a designer. I don't know. It's not for me to decide, but I certainly don't think of it as anything functional in its nature. Suspension. Did I just drop my pick? <laughs> 